In this video, we're going to cover what is a data streaming platform, also known as a DSP. A data streaming platform provides you with all of the tools you need to build data streams and stream derived tables the right way. I'm going to walk you through the major components of the DSP and explain to you why they're essential for making it easy to use your data. There's a simple three layer model that I'm going to introduce that helps frame the evolution of raw topics to reusable data streaming building blocks as provided by the DSP. At the base of this model, we have the basic topic as served by Apache Kafka. Kafka topics as provided by Kafka form the basis of our DSP. Producers append data to the topics and consumers read the data and do their own business work from it. Kafka doesn't have any notion of content. It's just bytes in and bytes out. But plain bytes leave a lot of room for error. We need structure and meaning beyond the basic topic. So this brings us to the second layer of our data model here, which is the data stream. A data stream is very similar to a table in a database. There's an explicit schema, there's data quality rules, and there's also access controls. Unlike a basic topic that has no real restrictions, a data stream aims for a higher level of quality and reliability. The schema registry forms the second major component in the DSP. It's a major part of data governance. The first job is to provide explicit schema structures for your events, such as the popular Avro, Protobuf, or JSON schema uh, formats. The schema registry allows you to manage your schema evolution, such as setting requirements for forwards and backwards compatibility, and it also includes validation. So you can't write data that doesn't conform to the expected structure, say due to a bug or uh, an error on a developer's part. It also provides data quality rules. While a schema may specify that a field must be a string, for example, a data quality rule can take it a step further and specify additional requirements about that string. For example, it must be exactly nine characters in length. Or perhaps it uh, must contain an at symbol in the case of an email address. Schemas, data quality rules, and data validation provides us with the basis of what we call a data contract. And data contracts provide the guarantees between the producers of this data and these consumers to ensure that they have a common understanding of what to create and publish and what that'll look like when they read it and use that data. The best data streams all use data contracts, but we need just a bit more to graduate a data stream to the top level data product. For that, we're going to need a data portal. The data portal forms the third component of our DSP. So let's say you have all sorts of well-formulated data streams. Which ones can you use? Who owns them? And where are they? A data portal, also part of the governance package with schema registry, is a combination of data catalog with lineage, browsing, search, and metadata about the data in your DSP. Prospective users can browse and search through this portal to find the data assets that work for them, including viewing the ancestry of the data, where it came from, and which other processes are involved upstream. The data owners can specify the information in the data portal about their data products, such as the metadata or classification tags or other sort of information that they would like to share with prospective users. 
As well, a data portal lets you easily grant and revoke access to these data products, as well as establish role-based access controls, encryption, and of course, logging to see who's using what. Data Portal combined with Schema Registry helps us build the top level data products, these reusable data assets that power operational systems and analytical computations all across the company. But I've been going on about topics, data streams, and data products. But where does that data come from? For that, we're going to look at the first and most common thing that most data streaming customers use to get their data into the DSP, connectors. Connectors let you get data from existing systems and write them into corresponding topics. So this could be something like a relational database. This could be something like a file system. This could be something like just even plain files that are dropped into, say, uh, an FTP folder. Connectors let you get your data and put them into your topics without having to write any code. The open source Kafka project provides Kafka Connect. Well, here at Confluent, we take it a step further and provide you with a serverless connect along with fully managed connectors. The Kafka ecosystem has hundreds of connectors for sourcing your data from a wide variety of sources. Of course, things like Postgres, MySQL, and Oracle database, to name just a few. In a DSP, the connectors integrate with your schema registry. This means your streams will have strongly defined schemas and can use both schema evolution and data quality rules right out of the box. On the other side of the picture, you can use connectors to sync data out of Kafka and into other things such as uh, SaaS services, data lakes, or data warehouses, and of course, things like our regular old relational databases, basically whatever you have a connector for. If you'd like to learn more about Connect, check out our video descriptions below. Now this brings us to our fifth piece of the DSP, the stream processor. And I'm gonna draw this right over here. Now, for Confluent, this is Apache Flink. Flink makes it possible to execute business logic on your streams, such as transforming events, materializing them to tables, joining them together, and things like building aggregations. You can use Flink both as a consumer of data streams and, of course, also as a producer. You can choose other Kafka compatible stream processors, of course, but for a well-functioning DSP, you're going to need to make sure that it can plug into your schema registry and respect the requirements of your data contract. Remember, the whole purpose of a DSP is to make it easy for you and your peers to use your event streams, which is what governance of schema registry and data portal achieves. And now for our sixth and final major component, table flow. One major historical streaming use case is to pump data into a data lake or data warehouse, as I showed down here earlier. Often written as a big parquet-backed columnar table. And these columnar tables, these parquet format columnar tables, are queried with something like BigQuery or Redshift or Presto or Trino. Also, things such as Databricks or Snowflake. Confluence TableFlow provides an alternative to Kafka Connect that we saw down here earlier. TableFlow converts well-formed data streams into append-only Apache iceberg tables backed by Parquet files. From here, you can then plug in the processing engines of your choice, Snowflake, Trino, Presto, BigQuery, Databricks, and things like DuckDB. 
This greatly expands and simplifies your access to the data. The result is that you get a choice. You can read your data as a stream via the Kafka API down here, or you can read it as a table via Iceberg using any compatible processing head. If you're interested in learning more about table flow and the stream table duality, consider checking out a video I've released called What is a Headless Data Architecture? You'll find the link in the description below. A data streaming platform provides you with a lot of powerful options based on the natural evolution of data streaming over the years. At the very bottom of the streaming pyramid, you have our basic topic, bytes in, bytes out. Adding schemas and data quality promotes these basic topics into well-defined data streams, reducing errors and significantly increasing reusability. And finally, establishing data contracts and introducing a data portal lets you promote selected data streams into reusable data building blocks known as data products. You can let your consumers browse, share, and subscribe to the data that meets their use cases. Connectors play a big role in bootstrapping data into your DSP, as well as connecting legacy systems through its suite of hundreds of connectors. Flink provides a general purpose stream processing framework with many powerful options for transformations and aggregations, as well as driving business logic. And finally, Tableflow, which easily converts streams into iceberg tables such that you can query it with the processing engines of your choice. That's it for today. If you like this video, I urge you to like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, I'll be releasing more Lightboard videos in the future, so I hope you'll stay tuned for more on event-driven architectures, streams, tables, and how to build a healthy data ecosystem.